Hey, what's up everybody? Good morning. It's Joe Simpson. I don't want to put my face in the screen because I got bedhead. I just woke up. It's pouring rain outside. I didn't feel like fishing. So I thought, hey, let's follow up and give you guys the tutorial on making your own baits. And I wanted to walk through some of the things that you're going to need to get started. Um, it looks like a lot, but it's not too bad. Um, the first key ingredient to making plastic worms is the plastic, and that's called Plastisol. And you can see this container here. A lot of the stuff I got off of Netcraft online. Uh, I can put some links below to some of these sites you can go to look for. Um, also, the Plastisol needs to be colored. So today I have a pumpkin, a black, and a white. So I'm gonna be using those three colors to play around with some baits. To keep it simple for my glitter, I'm gonna go with a straight confetti. Now, I'm not sure if the confetti or glitter stuff that I'm using is appropriate because some of it's made with like mylar plastics, which melts into the plastisol and doesn't really do as good a job. But some of it is more metallic based and it holds up better to heat. To heat up your plastic, I recommend Pyrex and a microwave. I've tried the pot method. I couldn't do it. I burned it. So, and it was this thing here. I tried to put this on like a, a hot pad, but as you can see, I scorched it. So I'm just gonna use this pot as the trash throwaway. And what you do is when you're making these baits, you keep all the little pieces and parts that are left over and you throw them into a collective bin. And then later you can make just kind of a mosh up color of leftovers, which is you know good, good use of recycling and good use of your money. And then lastly, you're gonna need, well not lastly, but you're gonna also need molds. This is a uh, Best NI mold. I got this off of Amazon. This is uh, shaped like an Easy Shiner by Kitech. Um, for these molds, you're gonna wanna have some type of clamp system to hold them shut, because when you're pouring the baits, you wanna definitely make sure they get held shut. And then another mold that I have that I really like, this is a Bandito Bug knockoff that I got from China. Now, it's kinda questionable how good this mold is, um, but I've gotten a few good pours out of it, and I've gotten a few not so great pours out of it, so I don't know if it's uh, user error or if it's mold, but from what I've seen, most of these guys that are doing this stuff for a living are using the aluminum machine molds like this. These give you much sharper and better results. I get about a 99% hit rate on this mold as opposed to the Guggen Bates mold. I probably get like a 70 or 65% hit, maybe a little better. Um, you want to stir with something metallic. A simple knife is good. When you watch the world's worst fisherman stir his stuff, he'll bring it up and look at it, kind of review his color and his glitter distribution. So it's good to do that. And then, of course, you're going to want gloves. At first, I thought, oh, who needs hot gloves? I'm tough. But what you forget is you suck this 350 degree blistering plastic up into this tube and you hold it with your hand. Let me guarantee you, you definitely want gloves <laughs> because it's not going to last long if you don't. And I keep a pair of scissors around in case we have to do a little trimming. And I think that's about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep these molds. Um, I've never prepped the molds before, uh, but today I'm going to prep these molds. And I'm going to focus on only the Bandito Bug and the uh, Easy Shiner for my colors today. And I'm going to start off with a green pumpkin with a confetti glitter. And then just going to go straight away and do that. Some people I see adding their colors after it's hot, some people see adding the colorant when it's creamy white. I don't really know the difference or you know if it matters, but I usually do my coloring after I've heated up my Plastisol. Plus I can see what's happening with the Plastisol a little easier. And one major thing you wanna do before you put your Plastisol in your cup to be heated up in the microwave is you wanna shake it up. Now, of course, there's one other part missing that I didn't have here to show you right in front of me, which is a microwave or a heating type thing. It is recommended that you don't use your household microwave to heat Plastisol on a regular basis, but I'm doing one or two off shot here and I'm getting a, a portable and I'm gonna put it in my garage, but just for today's purposes, I'm gonna use my household um, microwave. Hopefully I don't kill myself. So I've shaken the Plastisol, I've put it in the Pyrex dish. Next, it goes into the microwave and we're gonna put it right here in the center. And I usually start it at two minutes. Sometimes I'll just add 30 seconds and I'll pull it out in two minutes and I'll see how we're looking. So while the Plastisol is cooking, I'm gonna prep these two uh, molds. I'm just gonna use some of this grill spray here on the mold. Might be a little much, but I'm gonna let it roll. See what happens. Definitely wanna hit the Bandito Bug. There's so many crevices. 
Plus this material I just don't think is quite as good as aluminum. I'm going to hit the sprue area. Hopefully this doesn't put any type of bad characteristics in the mold or anything. I like these little clamps. A lot of these guys use quick grips and I'm not sure if that's something I should be doing or not. But for today, I'm using this. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, you're going to need a laser thermometer, one that can shoot without going into material. I've tried different thermometers. It's not worth trying. Just get the laser thermometer. It's 20 bucks at Home Depot. I'll link you below. It's made by Generac or General and uh, it works great. Okay guys, so my Plastisol is at 363 degrees. You might hear in the background the fans going, so one thing that's important is you want to get the ventilation going pretty good. Now here it is in its heated state. It looks like a foamy beer. Uh, normal rubber guys would be like, dude, what are you doing? And uh, I, I just can't get the bubbles out. I don't know why they occurred. Um, the thing about Plastisol is you're going to work some color and stuff first and then you're going to go back to the microwave anyway. So a lot of times these bubbles will work themselves out um, and quite frankly I don't care. Not for my purposes right now. Another reason you need your scissors is because you got to be able to cut the tip off of these, uh, these dies. Careful not to spill that all over. I don't know how much I'll need. I'm not worried about going real dark. I'm going to just stir this stuff in. Oh, yeah, that looks yummy. And see how it goes right into that pea green color. Going to definitely need some more. I want it nice and pumpkin. And what you do is you lift that knife and kind of look at it. That's going to give you your thinner components look. I still want a little more. Now we're getting somewhere, we're getting to that color that I like. This is like that pumpkin. I like a little bit more. Then we're going to be nice and rich. Okay, I like that. So I'm going to do this. Now if you take that thermometer that I had, I'm at 342. I could theoretically pour that, uh, but I'm not going to. Not yet. I'm going to do some of this glitter. I'm liberal with it, so don't get upset. I like lots of glitter. I want to be able to see it in my bait. Maybe one day I'll change up my, my program. It's in there. Maybe a little more. That's nice. Yeah, I'm trying not to stir it in a way that's going to... Yeah, that looks good. I like that. Let me put this back over here. Shoot it a little more time. 341, 339. I'm going to hit it just a second in the microwave. All right, now I think we've got this temperature where I want it. I'm not going to dilly. I'm just going to stir this, make sure this flake is distributed properly. I'm going to try to set this back here. And this is where it gets fun. You want to make sure you don't get any air pockets in there. All right, you bring your bait over here. Promptly start this pushing in. You'll feel the refusal, and I go nice and slow and easy, and when I get to refusal, I just push a little bit more, push a little bit more, push a little more, and then I squeeze a little into the top of this sprue right here. All right, heat that tip up a little more. That sprue might need a little more. See how it's sinking in? That's how it works. Okay guys, so I think I've had about, you know, five or ten minutes of cooling. It's actually a lot less than you would think for these. I'm going to go ahead and pull this Easy Shiner bait apart and see what we got. That's looking beautiful. Really nice, actually. And, oh yeah, it pulls right out of there. So I can definitely say that that grease is money. That really helps the pour. I don't know if you guys can see this bait very good in this picture, but I'll, I'll maybe review these later. Um, that looks awesome. Yeah, nice and shiny and greasy and yeah, I'm gonna put that in the cold water bath. And this other block here, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And you can see when this stuff dries, it becomes very pliable and easy to work with. So it looks like I squirted some stuff out the back, which I'm actually okay with because I think 
my problem was I wasn't getting this stuff all the way down in there. So one thing you can do to work this mold loose, it's got these corners and you stick something rigid in these corners, careful not to break them and you just start prying apart. And this is doing really good with that spray, especially. Um, oh yeah, money, holy cow, look at those guys. Yeah, I might have blown through a little bit um, and blown them out the other side, but I think this, this grease is the way to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this out. I'll trim these up a little bit. But yeah, these are going to be, these are really, really nice. All right, let's do another batch. Um, I'm going to leave these pre-greased forms the way they are because they look good. And yeah, man, I'm going to just clamp it back up and clamp it back up. And I am ready to go with another. And what I do with these clamps when I clamp them, I pivot the clamp down to the ground and it kind of builds like a little tripod type stance for these things. And all these little pieces that you pull out, this is called the sprue. I hate that name, but this is the, the fat part that leads to uh, pouring the bait. You can stick it back in your cup, recycle all that. Oh, ow, ooh, that was hot. And then uh, stick it back in the microwave and heat it back up. So here's the, uh, the plunger and you can clean this thing out easily just by rolling the stuff down off the shaft. That sounded very pornographic. And then um, you can pull the little button right out. You can see here that I just it just pulls right out. Everything's whistle clean. I might hit this with a little uh, greasy juice. Again, everything just rolls off the metal. And now you've got quite a bit left to pour. So I'm going to keep on pouring and uh, I'll be back with you guys in a little bit. Going back for the bandito bug. Come on, hit refusal, hit refusal, hit refusal, hit refusal, hit. There we go. Keep going. And I'm going to sprue that. Fill that up a bit. Gonna take some shiner worm stuff here. Nice big batch. Gonna push that down in there. Oops, I blew that out. Should have chilled. I think I just ruined that, but that's okay. That's an easy one to fix. Maybe I didn't. All right, guys, so I lost you a little bit there. I went off on a tangent and made a bunch of these baits. Um, I was getting frustrated. Some of these pours weren't working quite as good as I'd hoped, and I started kind of just cutting them up and throwing them back into the melting pot and making them over. But here's a run of pumpkin green with a confetti uh, glitter in them. And I think they turned out awesome, especially this one. This is one of the first ones that came out. And I think they just look awesome, to be honest. And um, you really can't beat the satisfaction of making something yourself and then going and using it and catching fish. But I'm gonna start on a black batch now. Uh, so hang with me and I'll, I'll be back in a sec. So one of the nice things about Plastisol is it looks like you've got a whole hot mess left over when you're done. But what's nice about this stuff is it just peels out and you can easily clean the cup for the next pour. And you can just reach in there and pull out the wad of goo. Now if I was being good, I would probably separate the green and put it with other. But I have a little pot over here that I've got just a, a trashy pot of miscellaneous stuff. So one day when I'm bored, I'll come and melt this all down together and make whatever color it makes just for fun. Um, but right now we're going to move on to some black and see if we can get some good colors going with this black. All right, so I've got this next batch to about 370. I'm going to go ahead and color it up and see if I can get a shoot here. We're going black. So I did like, I don't know, 10 drops. I probably should be measuring this stuff a little better. Meaning, you know, keeping track of just how black I'm making things. Um, that's still a little bit too gray, so I'm gonna blacken it up just a little bit more. And like I say, I'm just going for like a nice deep black color. That looks pretty good. So I get it mixed in, checking the temps. 
375 still, so we're still in the range of pouring. I think that's pretty good, just looking at it the way it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some sparkle glitter to it. Again, I'm just going with confetti on these pours because I don't really want to get into different colors yet. Just kind of keep it simple, stupid. All right. If I shoot this, and if it's 340 or higher, I'm going to just pour this. 353. Yeah, I think we're good. So I'm going to shoot this into the Bandito Bug Mold first. Okay. And hopefully. It was really holding me up there. I don't know what was going on. It's like I had air or something. Fill that sprue. I don't know about that pour. That felt really weird. Almost not good. I don't know if I can get this stuff hot enough to do another pour. Yeah, I'll try one. Try one on the swim bait. Top that off. Squirt out the excess. And. Alright, so these black uh, bandito bugs came out really nice in this mold. Um, I really think the key to a quality pour on these ceramic molds is definitely putting a little bit of grease or non stick spray in there seems to let the plastic move around perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a mat and start cooling these down, but those look great. So guys, here's my final run on the baits that I made. I'm sorry if the audio is bad, I'm in an echoey kitchen. Um, but yeah, you can't really beat the way these look. Um, they came out great. They have great, uh, you know, transparency. They, re they have great reflective qualities. Um, it's really hard to convey what it looks like through the camera, but um, I'll try to give you a better picture of these later. The blacks turned out really nice. Can't really complain about those. I did a little pearl in a couple of these and put like a little bit of a pearl uh, color in them. And then I had some straight black with just, you know, different glitters and stuff like that. So I'm pretty happy with this run. It took me about a cup and a half of Plastisol to get all these baits. And you're probably looking at $20, maybe 20 bucks worth of Guggen baits here. Uh, these are Kitech Easy Shiner lookalikes, and these are Bandito Bug lookalikes. So thanks for joining me. This isn't the greatest video. I just wanted to show you kind of the process that I went through and what it takes to make these. And hopefully you guys can start doing some of this stuff on your own. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to let me know. And I'll answer anything that I think I can answer it. But yeah, I can't really complain. I think these will definitely catch fish. And uh, as you can see, I've got a little bit of a mess to clean up, but it's worth it.